Hello and welcome to episode seven of Game On. Uh, I am Todd Kerpelman. I am your host and a developer advocate on uh, the Play Games team. I'm Wolf Dobson. I'm a developer programs engineer on the Play Games team, and we're here to talk to you about the latest in the Play Games services API. We're here to talk about management tools, and uh, we're going to end with a special surprise. I don't want to give too much away, but it's a, it's a graph. So uh, uh, I guess I kind of gave it away. All right, let's move on to news and updates. Um, we don't really have any. Uh, not, not a whole lot kind of happened. It's going great. It's, it's been it's been relatively. Keep playing those games. Keep playing games, um, and I guess no news is good news. So we'll move on to this week's topic, which are uh, the management APIs. These are a set of APIs we've um, had available for a while, um, but I'm not sure people have taken advantage of them to the extent that they should have. And uh, so Wolf has uh, Wolf has come to the rescue um, on behalf of all you developers, and uh, he's made life easier for you. So we're going to have him talk about it. All right, so uh, the admin tools, uh, this is the link to the docs if you want to check them out yourself. Um, basically, they are a bunch of REST calls that allow you to uh, do certain sort of management tasks like uh, reset achievements, uh, hide players on high score lists, uh, uh, un unlock achievements, that sort of thing. Reset your score. You got it. While you're in testing. And I bet when I say that, you're thinking, I don't want to make all these REST calls myself. I wish somebody had actually written that for me. And the answer is, somebody has, and that person is me. So let's take a look. So uh, here's the first of three tools. This is the Play Games score matic And what this allows you to do is set and reset uh, leaderboard scores. So this is the leaderboard from uh, Firewall Defense, Bruno's excellent game. And I can get the scores that I've submitted. Now, I haven't submitted any scores, so let's, let's make myself score a whole bunch of scores. I'm going to score 10,000 points. And it says, great, your score is submitted. And then if I call get my scores, uh, I've scored 10,000 points. And I'm first in my social group of two. Uh, but How come you're listed uh, three times there? <laughs> uh, that's uh, for uh, all-time high score, weekly high score, and daily high score. Okay. And I can reset all those scores with one click of the button. I'm reset. Boink. And when I get my scores again, I've disappeared. Ah, so this would be very useful if, um, say, we're testing our game. Our scoreboard is full of like you know our testers that have either found bugs to like get ridiculously high scores, and we're like, oh man, we got to clear this out before we, yeah, before or, we launch. Or you're, you have a, a system that does something special when you get uh, daily high scores or something like that. You want to be able to set that off again and again. So this is a way for you to reset that. You can only reset your high score. You can't reset everybody's high score. OK, that's probably important. To OK, know. next up is the Reset-O-Matic. Uh, the Reset-O-Matic uh, is the same thing, except for achievements. So here we have a list of achievements in uh, Firewall Defense. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this cadet thing, and I'm going to unlock it. Da ding Achievement unlocked. And when I refresh this, you can see it is now unlocked. Hooray. Uh, I could also, if it were an incremental achievement, increment it. Uh, and I can also just say, nah, I didn't win that on second thought. And when I refresh, uh, it, is now, uh, it is now still uh, revealed rather than unlocked. Revealed here meaning that. Uh I, I always find our achievement states confusing. Revealed means that you know what the achievement is, but you haven't earned it yet, right. as and opposed to hidden. Or unlocked, which means you've actually achievement unlocked. Yes. And so this is incredibly useful if, again, we're testing achievements before our game goes out and we want to kind of practice earning an achievement. We want to test that over and over again. Mm -hmm. We don't have to you know, create 500 test accounts. We just, <laughs> no, you we just want to do that. Yeah, reset this achievement. You'd be sad. OK. So then lastly, we have the hide -omatic. And the hide is the one that uh, you're really going to use uh, possibly you know, from week to week when you're developing your game. Um, uh, so this is uh, uh, the main high score list for, uh, uh, for firewall defense. And you might look through here and you say, well, all these guys got their scores legitimately. But you know, when I say I look through here, I see Bruno. And you know, Bruno was the developer of the game. It's clear he didn't score those 6,000 points by himself. No way. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to say, be gone. I'm going to hide you forever. And so this player is now hidden. And if I refresh the high scores, and I page the second page, you can see there's no Bruno there any longer. Um, that's totally cool. Uh, and if I decide to have mercy on Bruno and bring him back, I can click unhide, and he's unhidden. It'll take 
12 hours for Bruno uh, to reappear. It's a low priority job, so you know it's going to come back when it's going to come back. Now, when you hide this player, um, are they hidden from all leaderboards or just this particular leaderboard? Uh, no, they are. They are. Uh, they are hidden from all leaderboards. Okay. All right. Well, those are the management tools. Uh, these are all open source. You can get them from yourself, from GitHub, from our regular uh, samples. And I guess it's probably worth noticing compared to most of our sample apps that are like, hey, here's a sample that you can kind of see how it works, but then you need to go and like make your own game kind of, you know, and copy and paste bits here and there from our samples. This is really intended for people to essentially use as an entire application. Yeah, just you download you can, this thing, they, they run it. Yeah. And uh, in fact, I guess probably you can walk us through the setup steps. But mm -hmm. it really is, hey, this is the code that you should be using mm -hmm. on your own. Uh, and, and because it's an API, you can expand it any way you want. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at how we're going to set this up. Um, for you to use these tools, you're going to need to host them someplace. They're just a couple of HTML pages and some JavaScript pages. You'll need to put them someplace. Localhost even works for testing. Uh, you're going to need to link a web application in the console, and you're going to need to go into these uh, JavaScript and the HTML files and replace a couple of constants. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, client ID, app ID, and in the Hydomatic, you need the leaderboard. So uh, even if you don't have a web version of your game, uh, which probably applies to a lot of our mobile yeah, developers, yeah, exactly, a lot of your developers, you're going to need to put the uh, uh, you're going to need to link a web application anyway. And this web application is actually, you know, it's your game. Um, so you should be careful with those credentials like you would normally. So sorry, just to clarify, I'm not going to create a new application that's my admin for my Angry Fruit game. I'm actually going to go into my Angry Fruit game and I'm going to link a new web-based client yeah, ID it's just a, for it's a, this game. It's a web version of your, your Angry Fruit game. OK. Uh, and you're going to fill out where you want it to point to, and you're going to create a client ID. Uh, and when you create the client ID for the web console, you need to set your JavaScript origins to wherever you're hosting these pages. Uh, in this case, I have it on localhost, but uh, you could also host it just on a, a server inside your firewall or even public, although you'd have to be pretty careful with that URL. Um, uh, it is worth noting that this is, in fact, a version of your game. It's just a version of your game with your game missing and just the leaderboards and scoreboard stuff in there. And so uh, if you have a, a, a JavaScript origin set to localhost, it means that anybody else can download this. And they can go to the web version of your game, and they can pull out the client ID and the app ID and paste those into your things and like unlock all the achievements and give themselves an arbitrary score. They won't be able to do the management tasks uh, because uh, you, have to be on, uh, you have to be an owner or on the tester list to use those tasks, uh, to use those things. But they will be able to you know, sort of obviously just set their scores arbitrarily. And that you, you, you want to be careful with that. So I would advise if your game is launched, uh, you probably want to set your JavaScript or origin to something besides localhost, probably an internal server that's inside your firewall. OK, let's go on to the Q&A. Oh, all right. Oh, you got something changing your JavaScript origins. Why yes. would you want to do this? <laughs> uh, again, after you've launched your game, you might still want to do management tasks. So gotcha. uh, you can change that from so inside the we'd API. So we go to the uh, API's console, or I guess coming soon, the cloud console. And exactly. we would uh, change. This is basically where we could change our settings to be like, I don't want to be on localhost anymore. I want to be on yeah. internalserver.google.com or whatever. Well, probably not google.com, yeah, unless, unless you're us. Yeah, <laughs> probably not you. OK. Here we go. All right. So um, yeah, first question. It looks like so I very clearly I would want to use this hide mechanism if it looks like somebody is doing something kind of nefarious or they're being a jerk and they're like, hey, I'm gonna get a fake score up on there because yeah. I'm a I'm a lead hacker. Um, so why not just ban these players? Um, you could ban them, but then they might notice and they might get angry and come after you again. <laughs> but also, you know, really, you know, they're, they're still going to appear in their social uh, scoreboards. And so if somebody looks and says to the guy, yeah, he's still got the highest score, that's great. But they may be ruining the experience for the people on the public, uh, the public boards. So this allows them just to be like, well, they're not going to appear on the public boards. And then uh, they will, when they look at the public board, they'll still see themselves. But if anybody else looks at the public uh, board, they will not be there. All right, so that's probably something to um, make sure. W hiding means hide from everybody except the cheating or the, adverse, the hidden player. The adverse player. Yes. So they, they wouldn't even know that they've been hidden unless like, 
they were to get another friend with an account to look mm -hmm. at the leaderboards. And oh, look like at the public leaderboards. Public leaderboards. They will appear in the social leaderboards. And that looks like a lot of work. Yeah. Um, I guess I suppose the other advantage is if you hide someone that you uh, suspect it has gotten a score through nefarious purposes, and then it turns out they're just a really, really good player, you do have the option to unhide them. You can put them right back again. And all of their old scores will still be there. Right. Uh, and and uh, another real real use is that you have a bunch of testers who've been playing it in beta, and they all have really high scores. And you're like, I, I don't want to destroy your guys' score, but really we need to get that off there so people can have a chance. All right. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Now, using this tool, could I, for instance, you know, my customer service people, someone emails me and says, hey, I didn't get this achievement. Can we grant them that achievement using this tool? No, you need a valid access token for each account to be able to unlock achievements or lock achievements for them. So the idea is this is really used or for... Unreveal. Set yes. back to reveal. So this is really just used for testing purposes. My testers have earned the achievements. They want to practice earning the achievements again, or they want to test that scenario again mm -hmm. so we can get them all back to their original state. Yeah, the, the player hiding is the only thing you can do to somebody else. And again, only if you're an owner of the application. Yeah, that, I guess that kind of links into our third question, sort of what you mentioned. How do I, how do I know who, is, who has access to these right. tools? So uh, for the uh, testing tools, you just need to be on the tester list in the Play Games uh, developer console. And chances are, like, that's the one you've got to add so that people can try your game before any game services has been published, right. basically. And, and the owner of the application uh, is the person who can do the hiding and unhiding. OK. And you have to sign in as that person when you're using this application. Gotcha. All right. So even if somehow, yeah, I were to. Yeah, I were to get your client ID and I'm on. You're on localhost. I'm still using that, and I do all that stuff you said. You know, before. Yeah, if you if you unless I'm still you're limited in what. Unless you're do. logged in as as uh, that person, you can't make changes to thing or as an owner, and hopefully you're not leaking your owner credentials. Yeah, that would be <laughs> that would be bad. That would be bad. Well, um, all right, great. I think that's uh, everything we have on management tools. Uh, and uh, so we'll, uh, we got to get you out of here, so we have room for our, we have time for our graph. So uh, uh, you're you're on. Hello. Oh, hey, it's Javier. Javier, welcome. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yes, well, I'm Javier Snyder from the Google Play Games team. Um, well, here I am. And uh, you're here to talk to, to talk about a graph that we're about to see. So, yes. um, I, I'm, you know, I've got this whole seed here. I think I really only need the edge um, because we're about to reveal it right now. OK. Hey, check that out. OK. So, so what are we looking this? at? What is okay, it? OK, well, this is an improvement in the unreliable latency between peers in uh, real-time multiplayer games. OK, so that, yeah, I mean, I know we've, uh, you know, we launched multiplayer um, matchmaking at Google I.O. a few months ago. Um, since then, we've been, we've been sort of, uh, you know, iterating and improving. Um, one of those areas has been, um, yeah, yeah, match this, quality. Yeah, match quality. So what is this? This is a factor that uh, we are always trying to improve in uh, our matchmaking system so uh, the players can have a better experience in the matches that we create. So, so yeah, it looks like a couple weeks ago this graph took a nice little, a nice little dip. Yes, what so what is this? Uh, we start considering uh, the broad geographic uh, uh, the broad geographic uh, place of our players to uh, estimate the latency that they are going to have when we form the uh, the match. Gotcha. So, like, you basically now kind of prefer, like, if I'm somewhere in, say, Seattle, you're saying, "Hey, we're going to try and match you with other people in the Pacific Northwest area," because. Chances are you'll have better um, better latency than if we match you with exactly. somebody. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, this is something tricky because we don't know the right latency after the match is formed, and at that point it's too late to choose a different player. You can't so, you can't kick someone out for having low latency. No, that of course not. So uh, what we have to do is to collect data for all the matches between all the regions around the world and. With the, that data, we estimate what is likely to be the latency between two, two players in different regions. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be the same region. If we know that for some reason, you know, city A and city B have a really good internet connection between yes, them, exactly. your, your system would say, oh, it's OK to match up these two. Yes, huh. exactly. So yeah, essentially, we do that, and we, we 
this feature, we get better quality in the matches, as you can see in the graph. Yeah, we that have looks almost 15 or 20 percent improvement. That looks nice. This, yeah. So were there any uh, trade-offs involved in, uh, in yes, having to do this? Yes, you always have those. So uh, if we have a match or, or we when we are forming a match, we mm -hmm. see that this match is not really good quality or the latency is likely to be not so good, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't have other players there. Probably we have to wait a little longer to combine uh, the matches in, in order to wait for new players to arrive and see if they have better, uh, uh, better quality or better expected latency between them. So this is the trade-off, so maybe we need the players to wait a little longer before we form the matches. Gotcha. So what you're saying is, you know, for instance, I might be ready to play and the only other, you know, player available right now is in, you know, Australia or somewhere where it's far away, you know, probably slower, longer latency. The system's going to say, mm, we're not going to match you up with that guy. We're going to have to, we're going to look for somebody else with a better connection. And so it might take me longer to get into a match because I'm not going to play this guy in Australia. Yes, but of course we don't want our players to wait too much. Mm -hmm. So what we also estimate is the waiting time uh, to another player to appear for this particular game. And if we think that it's going to be too long, mm -hmm. we don't wait and combine the players right away. Uh, so you sort of you change based on you change the criteria a little bit based on how popular a game is, how many players are playing multiplayer at that time. Yeah, exactly. And this is something that is dynamically adjusted. So um, for each application, each variant, and each moment, we calculate all these variables and decide if weight is a good idea or not. So, okay. so we, we prioritize these two things to have a good quality, but also not to wait too much that the player drop the match or, or whatever. So for instance, in a very popular game, you could afford to reject you know, players that are too far away, might not have a good connection, because we know that there's constantly new people coming in and that I won't have to wait too much longer to find a, a matching player. Whereas a game where you know, it's, you know, it's just been released or it's not very popular or no one's playing multiplayer, um, even if some connection isn't optimal, the system will say, you know, we're going to try and match with him anyway, because at least it's better to have some some game than no game at all. Yeah, exactly. That's the idea. And by the way, we don't reject players. We just Sorry. choose to combine them with other players. You're right. I should, I should pick. I should pick, <laughs> I should pick better language. We love all of our players. We just yeah. yes. Okay. Okay. So this is it. That is um, that's very cool. So. Uh, so, so basically, our players should be noticing a, a better multiplayer experience. Yeah, and, that's um, the idea. Yeah, and over time, you know, as as you adjust uh, these, you know, these uh, matching systems, and I guess as more people start playing multiplayer, um, you'll they'll start to see improvements as well. Yes, yes. Um, so another thing that maybe in the future happened is if a player or developers want to improve based on the skills of the players, we can do some similar uh, stuff. I've seen, I've seen requests for that in the public database of like, hey, you know, I want to match you know, advanced players with advanced players or people of the same difficulty level. But I guess you, you do have a good point where there's a trade-off there where if we start you know, not matching people with, with potential opponents um, just because maybe they're not the same skill level, the wait time is going gonna, is gonna to go up. And depending on sort of how picky we get, um, it could, you know, the more factors we kind of have to wait until we get a perfect match, the longer the wait time could be. Yes, but of course we have to consider all these features or these parameters mm -hmm. uh, when, when we try to combine matches or players. And uh, of course we don't, uh, always the wait time, it's a very important factor and we don't want our players to wait too much. So, gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, it sounds like sounds like a tricky problem. Um, yeah, it's it's not a simple one. And again, the the major problem is that you don't know all the information after until it's too late to take the optimal decision. So you have gotcha. to estimate a lot of 
details to do this process. Huh. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're working on it and not me. <laughs> All right, well, I think that wraps up this episode of Game On. Uh, I'd like to thank Wolf and Javier for joining us, and uh, we will see you in, in two weeks. Thank you very much, Internet audience. <laughs>